Hi, my name is Karthik Rangappa. In this video, let's understand the delta of an option. In the previous video, we learned the concept of moneyness of an option, which helped us identify a strike as in the money, at the money, or out of the money. We will now steer our way in a rather interesting direction and try and understand the factors that influence the premium of an option. Now, before we do that, take a minute and think about a typical Bollywood movie. What are the factors that you think will make or break a Bollywood movie? Well, the success of a movie really depends on the actors, the technicians, the directors, and all the other various artists that are involved in the making of a movie. Likewise, in an options trade, irrespective of whether you're a buyer or a seller, the success of the trade depends on several factors. These factors collectively are called the option Greeks. There are four important option Greeks that you need to understand, and they are the Delta, Gamma, Vega, and the Theta. In this video, let's try and understand the Delta of an option. Here's something I noticed this morning. At 9.15 AM, when the market opened, Infosys was trading at 16.30. I noticed that there was a call option at 1660, which was trading at a premium of 42. At 10 a.m., Infosys price increased to 1650, and the same call option, that is the 1660 strike price, premium shot up to 49 rupees, a 7 rupee increase in premium. 30 minutes later, at 10:30, Infosys had a slight dip at 1645. The premium two dropped by two rupees, that is at 47. Finally, it's 11 a.m. now, and Infosys is currently trading at 1660. The 1660 option, if you recognize, is at the money, and the premium associated with that is 52 rupees. From this observation, we can conclude that as and when the underlying price changes, so would the option premiums. To be precise, as and when the underlying price increases, the call option premium increases. Likewise, as and when the underlying price decreases, the put option premium increases. I hope you understand why there is a change in premium. If you still have confusion on why it does, I would suggest you to review all the videos we've done so far to get a quick understanding of why the premium really changes. In fact, I would encourage you to load few option strikes and observe for yourself how the option premiums change with respect to the change in underlying prices. Now, one thing is clear, we've established that the premiums change with respect to change in underlying. But the bigger question is, how do I measure or how do I estimate what is the likely change in premium for a given change in the underlying? This is where the delta of an option comes to our rescue. The delta of an option helps us understand what is the likely change in premium for every one point change in the underlying. In other words, delta of an option is the rate of change of premium with respect to the underlying. Delta is a number that varies from 0 to 1 for a call option, minus 1 to 0 for a put option. For instance, if the delta of an option is 0.15 for a call option, it indicates that for every one point change in the underlying, the premium for that particular option will change by 0.15. Having said that, let me ask you this. Assume the underlying price of a stock is 200 rupees. There is a call option associated with this underlying at 210. The premium for this option is rupees 3. As a trader, you expect this underlying to move by 5%. That is a 10 point change. What do you think is the new premium after the underlying moves by 5%? Assuming the delta of this option is 0.2. Well, this should be fairly easy to calculate now. Remember, delta tells us the rate of change of premium for every one point change in the underlying. The underlying is expected to change by 10 points. The delta is 0.2. So for every one point change in the underlying, the premium changes by 0.2. I've got 10 point change here. So 10 into 0.2 is 2. Therefore, the new premium should be the old premium, that is rupees 3, plus the change in premium, that is rupees 2. Therefore, the new premium is rupees 5. 
Let's just take the example of a put option and see how the delta gets to work. Assume that there is an underlying which is trading at 50 rupees. There is a put option at 45 trading at 2 rupees. As a trader, you expect a 5% fall in this underlying or 2.5 points. Assuming the delta of this option is 0.2, what do you think is the new premium after the underlying cracks by 5%? Again, this should be fairly easy to calculate. We know that for every one point fall in the underlying, the put option increases value to the extent of delta, which is 0.2. We expect a total decline of 2.5 points. Therefore, the change in premium should be 2.5 into 0.2, which is 0.5. Therefore, the new premium is the old premium, that is 2 rupees, plus the change in premium, which is 0.5, Therefore, the new premium for this put option after the decline is 2.5. So now you know how you can use the delta to identify the new premium given that there is a change in the underlying that you as a trader would expect. The question now here is, how do you find out the delta of an option? Well, there are several calculators available online. There is one on Sensible as well, which you can use to identify the delta of an option. But if you find that cumbersome, let me give you a cheat sheet to understand how to recognize the delta of any given option. Generally speaking, all call options which are out of the money have a delta in the range of 0 to 0.5. All at the money call option has a delta of 0.5. All in the money call options has a delta which ranges between 0.5 to 1. So at any given point, you just have to look at the strike price, identify whether it is in the money, at the money or out of the money. And once you identify that, you can get a sense of what is the likely delta of that option is. Likewise, for a put option, all in the money put option has a delta ranging between minus 0.5 to minus 1. All at the money put option has a delta of minus 0.5. All out of the money put option has a delta which ranges between minus 0.5 to 0. So at any given point, if you have a put option to evaluate, just figure out whether it is at the money, in the money or out of the money, and you'll get an approximate range for the delta. Before I conclude this video, there are two other aspects of delta that you should know about. Firstly, you can use delta to evaluate the probability of a strike expiring in the money. For example, let's assume the delta of a call option is 0.2. What this means is that there is only 20% chance that this option will expire in the money. Therefore, if you as an option seller is looking at selling an option to pocket the premium, then you would want to select an option which has low probability of expiring in the money. Therefore, choose options which have low deltas. Let's extend that. Assume that the delta of an option is 0.8. That means to say there is a 80% chance that this option will expire in the money. Those are the options that you as a seller don't want to touch. Of course, you can extend this concept to put options as well. But always remember, irrespective of whether you're selling a call option or a put option, always ensure that the delta of such an option is 0.5 or lower. If it is 0.5 or lower, the chances of that particular option expiring out of the money is very high, which means to say there is a very good chance that you can retain the premium that you've received from the buyer. Of course, you can extend this concept to put option as well. Whenever you're selling an option, ensure that you're selling an option which has a delta of 0.5 or lower. By doing so, you're ensuring there is a very low probability that your option will expire in the money, therefore giving you an opportunity to pocket the entire premium the buyer has paid to you. One last thing, whenever you have multiple option positions in your portfolio, belonging to the same underlying, belonging to the same expiry, you can always add up the deltas. Let me explain. Assume that I have at the money call option of Infosys long, and I also have at the money put option of Infosys long. What do you think is the overall delta of my position? Well, it's fairly easy to understand this. At the money options, irrespective of call or put, has a delta of 0.5. On one hand, I have long call, for which the delta is plus 0.5. On the other hand, I have a at the money put option, which has a delta of 
negative 0.5. So I can always add these two deltas because it belongs to the same underlying and the same expiry. Therefore, plus 0.5 and negative 0.5 ensures I have zero delta. This is also called a delta neutral position. What this means in real life is, irrespective of where the stock price of Infosys goes, my portfolio of two options will have zero effect. I have explained Delta in great detail in Varsity. I would highly encourage you to read those chapters related to Delta. If you have any queries, please do post your comment there and I'll be happy to get back to you with a reply. One last thing before I conclude this video. Assume that there is an option which has a Delta of 0.3, which means to say it's an out of the money option. Now, now the underlying price changes and the option transitions from out of the money to at the money. Therefore, the delta of this option should be 0.5. Clearly, the delta has moved from 0.3 to 0.5. Now, on what basis does the delta really move? What are the factors that influence the delta itself? We'll try and understand this in the next video. Key takeaways from this video are, 